Feeling better now? Is anything still haunting you? Talking to you? Do you remember who you are, Isolt? Oh, yes. Doctor, I see it now. That fire... The fire that devoured everything... How could I ever forget? The raging fire consumed everything... Including Theophil. He was screaming... His mind was already gone before he ignited it all. How could he ignore everything with such disregard? Who allowed him to forget with such disregard? What I remember... I remember it all. I am from a noble family. I need to be a qualified Dittersdorf. An outstanding arcanist. A first-rate opera singer, a good sister, and a good daughter. Never forget my manners, never forget the family. But he... he got away with it. If Theophil was truly a man of courage, he should have joined the army... Or fought a duel with someone. That would have made his death more honorable. Yet, he chose to die this way. After a life of debauchery. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told you that. It's okay, Isolt. You're doing it right. That's what therapy is for. These memories are exactly what we need. What's been deliberately repressed and ignored in the depths of your heart will manifest into words and help you reconnect with your emotions. Soon your symptoms of hysteria will diminish. Don't be afraid. You can talk to me about anything. In the name of my family and the Hippocratic Oath. I will keep things between you and me. Everything will be a secret. Our secret. Our secret. <laughs> Klingt wunderbar. Ich erinnere mich an dieses Zimmer. Das Zimmer war übermäßig hell. Ich konnte mich nie an Glühbirnen gewöhnen und bevorzugte das sanftere Licht von Kerzen. Meine Mutter hatte immer eine weiße Kerze brennen, wenn sie mich beim Zubeck gehen sah. Was ist mit dieser Kerze passiert? Jemand hat sie umgeworfen. Ha! Das freche Balk. Mein dunkelhaariger Bruder. Er zündete die Kerze an, setzte das Zimmer in Brand und verbrannte all seine Gemälde. Er rannte zu mir. Sein Körper brannte. In seiner Hand war... Eine Waffe. Ich sagte Theophil einmal, er sei kein Genie wie Weininger. Sich eine Kugel zu geben, werde ihn nicht berühmt machen. Nur ein Debüt hinterlässt Eindruck. Die folgenden Shows sind langweilige Wiederholungen. Er lachte. In der Tat, zu viele haben sich für Ruhm erschossen. Nur durch leidenschaftliches Feuer würde die Welt sich an mich erinnern. Ich verabschiedete mich von ihm und ging nach unten, um mit den Damen zu sprechen. 
Blutschuh drängte den Holzboden und tropfte in meinen Becher. Tropf, tropf, tropf. Ich ging nach oben und fand Theophel in einer Blutlache liegen. Ein Revolver lag in seiner Hand. Ach, wie sein Zylinder wie Musik klickte. Ich hob mein Kleid an, damit das Feuer wie Wasser herabbrüllen konnte. Ich lehnte mich über das Loch an seine linken Schleff und sagte, Theophil, wo ist dein Feuer? Theophil setzte sich auf und sagte, Isolde, wo ist deine Waffe? Ihre Waffe? Meine Waffe? Meine Waffe! Ich erinnere mich jetzt. Ich hielt die Waffe die ganze Zeit. Theophil stand im Arbeitszimmer. Die Flammen im Hütten, den Balken, die Decke, alles. Was? Er rannte auf mich zu, schreiend vor Schmerzen. Er brannte. Die Hitze trocknete mir die Augen aus. Er stand in Flammen und rannte auf mich zu. Doktor, er rannte auf mich zu. Tief einatmen. Ganz langsam ausatmen. Es ist alles in Ordnung, Isolde. Ich bin hier bei Ihnen. Sie sind sicher. Und dann hörte ich einen Schuss. mich nicht erinnern. Der Abzug war schwer zu ziehen. Nach dem Schuss ist es mir aus der Hand gerutscht. Ich habe Tiefel getötet. Es war ich. Ich verdiene es nicht, das Recht zu haben an seiner Beerdigung teilzunehmen oder seine Gedenkerstellungen zu veranstalten. Ich verdiene keine Sympathie und Freundlichkeit. Ich hätte in dem Feuer verbrennen sollen. Ich hätte sterben sollen. Alles ist gut. Ich bin weder Richter noch Polizist, Isolde. Ich bin einfach nur Ihr Arzt. Ich werde Ihnen treu bleiben, egal was Sie denken, wer Sie sind. Ihr Leben war in Gefahr. Jeder hätte dasselbe getan. Es war nicht Ihre Schuld, Isolde. Sie waren einfach verängstigt. Schämen Sie sich nicht für Ihr instinktives Verhalten. Seien Sie versichert, Ihr Geheimnis ist bei mir sicher. Nach Dr. Freud ist das Akzeptieren Ihrer Dunkelheit der erste Schritt zur Befreiung. Es erfordert Mut und ist nicht einfach zu tun. Die meisten Menschen schaffen es nicht. Aber Sie haben das sehr gut gemacht. Habe ich eine gute Arbeit geleistet? Ja, eine ausgezeichnete Arbeit. Doktor!
All right, this is as far as I can walk you. You have to host a ceremony tomorrow and Tosca's next week. Vienna won't forgive me if I take up too much of your time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Like you said, the night breeze will do me some good. I heard from Heinrich that you're trying new things. I read his stage design. The style of Berlin expressionism he adopted is quite refreshing. I have to admit, he became a little strange after his trip to Berlin. But his passion for art didn't change, nor did his love for his fellow Viennese. I appreciate his hard work as well. But, sadly, the Vienna Court Opera didn't approve our performance application. So we turned to the Wiener Volksoper. Well, I'm not surprised. Understand that Mr. Mahler is the artistic director of the Vienna Court Opera, and even he could not bring Salome to the stage. Those boring, stale old-timers will never approve of new forms of art. They always expect something predictable and unvarying. The same old pieces and settings. I'm the reason Tosca can't get the permission. Because I, the star, am a medium, a maniacal arcanist. Oh no, that's not it. In Vienna, the great composers, conductors, and performers, almost all of them have been arcanists. Wiping out the unique talents of arcanists and their artistic contributions would be like setting fire to the cultural tapestry of Viennese society. Oh, sorry, a flood. A flood is better. They consider it a desecration of the stage. When a singer is channeling, she's essentially asking a spirit to possess her and speak directly through her. Thus, she becomes the character in the opera. People will question the authenticity of the voice. Is it still the singer's own voice? Or is it a fraud? No, Isolde. They think that because they know nothing about performance. Not even the slightest thing. The nature of the stage is to be someone else. If they're so intent on the presentation of the true self, the mayors in my clinic would like a word with them. It is an actor's job to become another person. On stage, in a fictional world, they briefly trick our eyes into thinking it's real. And to achieve that, we rehearse rigorously through sweat and pain. We take care of the music, the costumes, the settings, the lights. Your gift helps you do this better than others. That's all. But I use the arcane skills of the Dittersdorf family. I couldn't have done these things without them. What if an arcanist's talent for art is also a curse? Maybe I'm just a fraud, Doctor. I'm propped up by my illness and once it's cured, my talent will be gone with it. It's not like that, Isolde. Using your talents is not cheating. We're arcanists, but before we allow ourselves to be defined by that word, who are we, really? If an arcanist grew up on a lonely island, she wouldn't see herself as an arcanist, but as a person like you, like me, like everyone. Doctor... But you know, the truth is, when I look at a crowd, I don't see any arcanists. All I see is our people, with different talents, trapped in life, their selfhoods ground smooth until they're indistinguishable from the crowd. Humans celebrate their flaws, yet they persecute our gifts. They control the narrative. 
They define our gifts as diseases, our talents as weaknesses, and our bloodlines as curses. If we're cured, they're just another face in the crowd. But if we live on with our diseases, we're forever ill, forever afflicted. We Arcanists have to live in such a world, where we survive through suffering. Look at this city, this most enlightened, tolerant city. Under the sweet surface of the Sachertorte lies powder and poisonous vine. Arcanists are recognized for their artistic abilities, nothing more. We hold no parliamentary seats, no professional titles, and no professional credentials. We are exiled and marginalized. Our only voice in the culture is to be decoration, because decoration impacts nothing. The restrictions and discrimination against Arcanists are worsening by day. First, we had to register with the government. Then we needed residence permits. And now, permission to cast arcane skills. And we can do nothing but tolerate, stay polite and dignified. Be a good arcanist, show no signs of instability. Because we're supposed to stay rational, otherwise we're animals. But people are complicated, they can't stay rational forever. As Dr. Freud said, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. You might be sick, I might be too, but the truth is, this whole society is sick. You can't just treat the individual and ignore the bigger picture. It was the repression of irrational desires that allowed the diseases to spread in our time. In this case, the people on that island are much freer than we are. You mean that mysterious island? I hear gold is in the ground there. Remember the lady from the Foundation? Yes. Why? She said the Arcanists on that island are not lunatics, and they're living a life free of restrictions. Doesn't that sound great? If we could form our own society, like those artistic associations, and have control over our own production and labor... This must have been some kind of enlightenment. I can almost see it. They'll show us another way of life, a kingdom free of oppression. To help them is to help ourselves. And that's also what your exhibit is about. Me? No, I'm not as great a person as you. But you are working for a great cause. Isolde, my friend, I've shared my dream with you, and I hope one day it'll become your own, until the day when everyone shares the same dream. Our society needs a revolution, a radical surgery. We urgently need a new vision to reunite us at the dawn of the new century. Like the secession in art history, we need a secession of Arcanum to distinguish us from hysterical lunatics street peddlers and con artists. We need a new dream, a new saga. We need to reinvent ourselves and become a new people. No more repression, only the full embrace of our primal desires. That's why your work has not been in vain. From Tailfield's art exhibition to the promotion of new art. Do not doubt yourself. You're helping a great cause. Thank you, Doctor. This is the first time anyone said that to me. I will bear that in mind. Your words in the breeze of night have been stirring... Can you walk with me a little longer? I'd like to hear more things about the cessation you mentioned, so that I can prepare my speech for tomorrow's ceremony. Yes, it is my pleasure. 
Would you like a walk to the Vina Folk Sopa? I think they put up new posters. Reporter of New Free Press, Editor-in-Chief of the Pan, the founder of the Fakr. Oh, that's Aegon Erwin Kish, the reporter who uncovered the scandal surrounding Colonel Alfred Redl. I had investigated this before. Adolf Loss, the architect. He designed the Steiner House, as I recall. That's Major Maximilian Honge and his wife. Who knew that celebrities like them would visit this exhibition? But they look different from the pictures in the papers. They were younger and less chubby. Has my memory failed me? Or is it because photography is also an art of beautification? Mr. Cull was right. People are flocking to the secession building to get a glimpse of the new art. I can't appreciate these things at all. I've informed the field agent squad. As soon as Heinrich shows up, we'll get him under control. Ideally, we will take him away for illegal use of arcane skills. It is the best reason and the least risk. It also complies with the laws of this time. If Menace Vindicte is behind all this, they will show themselves for sure. The squad will assist us with the perimeter by then. Marcus. Your mission is to watch everything closely. Heinrich could be disguised and hiding in the crowd. Also keep an eye on the manners and the rituals. That's what we were originally here for. Leave it to me. I won't miss a thing. Mr. Thomas, the representative, is talking to the ladies about Expressionism. His parents did not foresee the success of Impressionism, the works that made no sense but became priceless on the market. That's why his generation overcorrects their aesthetic standard and pays compliments to any art they don't understand. The reporter for the New Free Press and that major are discussing the frequent suicides in Vienna. They've written articles about it, and many of them attribute it to the publication of The Sorrows of Young Weather. Kakanya is describing the founding idea of the circle. This is the first magic circle drawn by the primitive man. Hmm, huh, quite a strong woman. The military exercise in Bosnia and Herzegovina this spring, General Conrad to lose power, a low-pressure trough on the Atlantic Ocean, Ivory-colored paper for official use only. The general, wife of a cabinet member, court sand. Is arcanum a bacterial infection? Is psychoanalysis a new type of mental illness? 
Mr. Heinrich is not here. Nothing useful on this page. Ah, Miss Isolde again. She's the host of the exhibition. She seems healthier than the last time we met. I don't know why, but I'm happy for her. She's about to make a speech. It is my honor to host this exhibition. Before we begin, I'd like to express my gratitude for Mr. Heinrich, who is Theophil's friend and the curator of this exhibition. Heinrich still hasn't shown up. Did he notice something? And also, a friend of mine, the founder of the circle, Miss Clara. Without her tireless work behind the scenes, we wouldn't be here today. Born into a rising arcane family of the middle class, Miss Clara is a devoted doctor and an art connoisseur with impeccable taste. <sighs> Dr. Kakanya is standing up, greeting the guests. That's an awkward smile. Looks like she didn't see this coming. Hmm. Miss Isol is giving her an encouraging look. She wants to introduce her friend to the celebrities? So they're actually very close. <sighs> I told her not to mention my name. Miss Kakanya is lowering her hat. Does she not like the spotlight? No, that's not it. Is it because of Miss Didastov's gaze? This is the debut of the Salvation, the only painting Theophil left behind. <gasps> this is it. In his last moments, Theophil became obsessed with the Golden Isle. He envisioned it as a realm of art and culture, a utopia for arcanists. There, the primal vitality and passion of arcanists would be preserved and never tainted by the outside world. He wrote, that island holds the hope of salvation. Hmm, is this so? This is above my clearance. Sounds like everyone in Vienna has their own interpretation of the island. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. We are forming a committee to petition the Empire to cease its attacks on the island. The Arcanists there are not lunatics. They are simply living free. Huh? Their existence is a revelation to us. To help them is to help ourselves. Our society is sick. Treating the individual is only treating a symptom. It needs a radical surgery. A revolution that would let us rediscover our oppressed nature and reinvent ourselves in this world. Something's wrong. Her speech is... I wish for the Arcanists to unite and establish an independent kingdom of freedom free from repression and oppression. <gasps> it's an emergency. Seal the exits. Add is all to our targets. Marcus, now. What? Am I hearing things, or did Miss Dittletoff really say that? Oh, forgive her. Perhaps Miss Dittletoff hasn't fully recovered from her illness. 
I think so too. What? How? I did not tell her to... Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, calm down! Do not panic, for I have found salvation for you! Henry? What is that behind you? Often the target showed up, but golems are attacking us. I see it too. The arcane skill of object enchantment. Marcus, give it a read. Please do not ignore what Miss Datus Dwarf is saying. This is a proving ground for a world-ending experiment. A catastrophe is coming. The clouds of war are filling up the sky. Open your eyes and look at all we have now! The music, the art, the ambitions of progress! Man's gunfire will destroy them all! What? What are you all talking about? Not to worry, Doctor. You simply don't know yet. Follow me and I'll show you everything, where your dream has taken a root. This is ridiculous. An independent kingdom? It is treason. We are Viennese. Why would we want to leave our own country? Are these golems works of art too? They look expensive. I'd like one in my collection. Open the door. And let us go. This travesty is a disgrace. Damn! Are these golems immune to Arcanum? We can't get to Heinrich! Madame Hoffman, I read them. Object enchantment strokes. The same ones we found at the Foundation branch. Any signs of the Manus rituals? No. Nothing yet. Golems can only be broken from within. Marcus, tell everyone the method. Ola, evacuate everyone and use the mute spell. Don't let more people hear about the error. Heinrich escaped with his old. There's an opening behind the painting. After them. Did I start running? This year. Please, don't resist. Intersect and avoid. You don't want to miss it. Got you. Relax. Another try? Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, it's a bubble. Enjoy! Ouch! <laughs> Nowhere for love. It's newly made this year! Free. You don't want to miss it! Stop. How troublesome! Stop. Got you! No it could be 
even that. I smell the scent of mint oil. Time to check my calculation. Madam Hoffman, are you all right? I'm fine. They have escaped the tunnel. <sighs> Stop the chase. Let's not cause any more disturbances. This is... strange. What is it, Marcus? This tunnel leads to... the Vienna branch of the Foundation? They are much naughtier than the Foundation's kids. Thank you for your mediation within the committee. I think you're right. Sending more people to the island will only exacerbate the trust issue. They don't trust us. And that's what Arcana wants. Things have just got better. And we can't let anything else upset this delicate balance. I think... If we somehow can't come to an agreement with the Apeiron, we should at least prevent them from allying with the Manus in turn. Come in, please. Good morning, Miss Verton. I'm here to see if you need help with anything. May I have some more paper? Of course. We are always generous in our support of the contemplative. Thank you, Miss Marta. Don't you want to ask me what I'm writing letters for? Despite all the unpleasant events... The integrity of your cell number is unquestionable. The Foundation is negotiating with the outside world. They are trying to resolve this unfounded territorial dispute peacefully. We've yet to reveal the coordinates of the island, and don't want to exacerbate the conflict. Could you convey our sincere intentions? You're such a young girl, yet you sound like an official. But I'm just a practitioner without a number, a roamer of turbulent times. I haven't been on this island much longer than you. I will send your message, but I'm not the one who makes the decisions. It's just, from what I know about the teachings of a Peron, what you're striving for is not of their concern, Miss Verton. I don't understand. All that is trivial in the phenomenal world is the trivialest of trivialities. If the emanation arrives, everything will be washed away. Wars, disputes. Their number one priority is how to find salvation once and for all.
The fact is, we're going astray. The emanation in 1999 had taken away almost all our outside contacts. Ever since the incident four years ago, we've been cut off from the outside world and have become an isolated island in the emanation. And during these four years, no research on the emanation progressed. In the end, the theoretical study of its patterns was proven completely wrong. How long should we sit idly by? Until the humans take over our island? No matter who revealed our coordinates, be it the Foundation or Manus Vindicte, someone should be held responsible. 37 is the one in charge of studying the emanation. Save your questions until after she wakes up. 6 is treating her now. Also, talking about the decisions made four years ago is meaningless now. What's more, the Foundation is not hostile. They helped us minimize the damage from the reveal. Manus Vindicte has also given us constant material support since that difficult time four years ago. <laughs> 37. She's just a child. Can't even handle her own business. Ever since she brought outsiders to the sacred place, everything has changed. You know you're judging a child in a coma? Even if 37 did something wrong, she's certainly paying for it. Don't get angry. What 42 is trying to say is simple. Even if the emanation will take away the human army, when is it coming? Now that our model has failed, how can we be informed of the next emanation and act accordingly? If pure theoretical research is doomed to failure, and if we must look outward, how can we restore communication with the outside world? Do we stand with the Foundation, or with Manus Vindicte? Two hundred and ten. Your words are provocation. Are you saying that we should stop being neutral and get involved in the endless faction disputes? This is against what Apiron stands for. I can't agree either. The truth is supposed to keep us off the Wheel of Birth. Not on it. I was just interpreting what 42 had in mind. Moreover, we're already caught in the wheel of birth. Human weapons were undeniably dropped on our island before. The tragedies it caused and the thirst for justice will only keep us trapped in this cycle. But what caused this cycle to begin with? Brothers and sisters, you are blinded by the shrapnels of that conflict, and you're missing the essence. Listen to me, and I will tell you. Cut to the chase, 210. It seems you're the one blinded by your own rhetorics. Who can get me the stone clock on Six's seat? I'll clobber him myself. The original cause is the failure of our research on emanation. Our excellence comes from our beliefs. Once the truth fails us, the foundation that sets us apart from the world will also fail us. However, my people of great wisdom, forgive me for imagining a worst case for you. We believe the Book of Nature was written in the language of mathematics. And every number is a transcendental existence living in the kingdom of eternity. Math is the path to truth. The calculation of math patterns has led us to pursue the fundamental knowledge of the world. The origin of Numa. But, what if the supreme existence has no pattern at all? 
What if the ebb and tide of Numa is chaotic and irrational? Two hundred and ten, are you denying our beliefs? Are you saying the results we've achieved are just coincidences? The fundamental theorems of ancient mathematics? The applications and improvements from modern mathematics? The mathematical laws in atomic clocks? And leaf venation? And every prophecy of emanation that were proven correct? Were they all just a collective dream of ours? Well, like I said, I was just imagining a worst-case scenario. Exhaustion is also a common method of proof. Please help us, O oh Apiron. Correct the errors of our souls. Bring us back on the right path. Harmonize our spirit with the flesh. Our will with life. Avoid sedition from a city. Purge sickness from the body. They don't look like seagulls. Or am I mistaken? Are these all from the outside world? What's happening out there? A lovely day to rest at an outdoor cafe, isn't it, darling? Everyone working here is a capable server and knows how to address you properly with my lady. I'm here for one simple thing, information. With a careful ear to the goings-on, a shrewd businesswoman can gather all the latest news. There she comes, that girl in green with the bouncing feathers in her hat. Don't worry, she can't hear us from here.
Of course you do. Isn't she our lively little cockatoo? She says she's a psychiatrist, but with all the work she does for the people, she's more like Vienna's own Robin Hood. people around her with their gold cufflinks and patched sleeves very likely they're from Leopoldstadt you can hear them saying our golden era is finally here forget all these melodramatic rumors Maybe you know it by a different name? Perhaps you caught a glimpse of it under the list of exhibit sponsors? Europe at that time welcomed people from all over the world. Its culture and art held as their highest ideals. Its institutions believed they held the keys to paradise. They once believed that they were the lucky few. Blessed with the wisdom of a golden age, that's why they still linger here even after the smoke of war faded the glimmers of gold away. It's not surprising to see Our Lady with them. See, she has to seek these well-hidden things and chirp along with the most overlooked voices. But I feel sorry for her, because she herself overlooks some of these teeny tiny things said at her own expense. Words taken as jokes, ignored because her wishes and anticipation outweigh their sting. But while songs are floating in the wind, the clock keeps ticking. People in the cafe talk about the secessionists and the newest plays in the same breath. No one cares about the rumors trafficked in the newspapers. They're only concerned with what is in front of their eyes. St 
still, the good doctor comes to share the pain of that melancholy lady, and then next to the cafe, to encourage the lower class to persevere. She says that every man is entitled to the same rights. She'll draw a circle around them all like the ring road or the round mirrors in her clinic. The good times will come again, so say the coffee sippers. But you know, in the end, they'll be like the undissolved sugar at the bottom of the cup. My dear, your coffee is getting cold. <laughs>